We have a problem. Well, the problem's really this guy. Yeah, Mr. Paul. Now, Mr. Paul has got his solar panels on his roof on linear actuators. So, they go up and they go down by the press of a button. So, we've bought linear actuators and that's what we're fitting. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get up on the roof and we're going to push the panels together because there's about that much gap between our two panels now. So, as you can see, our panels are bolted down with these. Uh, if you want to see the full install of the panels and those fitting these fire hinges, I'll leave a link just up there somewhere. But what we're going to do is we're going to take out this gap that runs between the two of them by undoing these and pushing this panel all the way back to meet that one. These have been up now for well over 12 months and we've had no issues with them at all. Right, we've moved the panel to meet the other panel. Now we're just going to fix it back down into place so we know that both panels are in alignment. Wow. I do the Englands. <laughs> right, where we secure our solar is onto these side brackets here. We've got two on each panel. Um, we're still going to keep two on each panel, mainly because the linear actuators are good, but purely for security and safety and side winds and things like that, we just think it's better to have two, don't we? Yes. We've got all the gubbins off, we've got our original brackets that held it down. Now we've just got to basically fix these two panels together. And then we can do the same on every, each, each line going through, get about six bolts in there, and then do the same on the other one, and bolt them together. Uh, one, two, no, three, four. Four bolts. Yeah. And then we will be on a piece of uni struss going right the way across to actually basically stiffen them all up and attach the um, the actual actuators. actuators too. The actuators, right? Let's get on to them now. This is going to be the next part of the job. Now you probably noticed the motor sits underneath. Now I want the motor to sit sideways like that doesn't matter to the operation it still does the same thing doesn't matter but if you put it on the side you've got less gap underneath the solar panels you don't have to raise your solar panels that's what we're hoping for anyway now the problem with them is that the end of the actual motor you can see it has this collar that has a split pin that runs through there and then this allows that to basically tilt up like this now because we want them sideways, we can't put that on because it'll snap, obviously. So, I'll show you what I've done. So I've made this little piece here. It's just a piece of box section and I've put holes in the top and holes in the side. Now, so we can mount this onto the actual side and then it makes the actual motor go sideways. Things have took a turn for the worst. People need to do research. People don't need to be in this video. So, <laughs> um. stay <laughs> right the brackets on the basically there wasn't enough room underneath the actual solar panels for us to fit the actuators the actuators fitted okay but it was the mountain brackets and I'm going to use this Mars bar to show the mountain bracket so the mountain bracket is quite large you we could have cut it down but you really need two bolts in them to hold it sufficiently we did think about bolting it to the roof but up and down Emma no. said no. Anyway, so what we've done is this cheap upgrade of £100 to have it all electrical and blah, blah, blah has nearly doubled in price now. So we had to get two lengths of 41 mil uni stuff, which we got from a local dealer, which costs us twice as much as you would on eBay. Thanks for that, but someone's impatient. That would be me. Emma's the waiter, I'm impatient. Just, that's life. As well as getting the uni stuff, we then had to buy paint. So, £100 for the um, actuators and the controller, that wasn't bad. Then another £50 for the um, uni strut, and then another, let's say, £20 for the, um, paint. the paint, which puts it all up to £170. Uh, yeah, probably around about £180. If you said £200, you'd be well in budget. But I only wanted it to cost £100, but there you go. That's life, innit? Get on with it. 
going to chop these both down by a meter. Then we're going to spray them. Then we're going to bolt them up. Then we're going to put the pa everything that's on there now is going to bolt back onto these, which isn't a hard job. It's just is what it is. First of all, we need to paint them. Jobs are done. So we got the unistrut up on top. I'll show you them in a minute. So now we can actually get the actuators up there and get them installed. As you can see, we've put another piece of unistrut there on both sides, and we've basically just unistrutted the unistrut to the unistrut, giving us an extra 31mm height. So the plan is right in the centre of the actual unit, so right in the centre of the solar unit, which is going to be the heaviest point of the actual board, we're going to put the actuator, which is going to sit just there, like that. We have these brackets, which are going to bolt into the actual unistrut right there, which will give us enough room to slide it on and make it go up and down. Don't forget as well, get yourself a little hoover and um, any metal that's got onto your roof, just hoover it up because it will rust and it will look awful. Before we connect the um, control panel into the van drill holes, what we're going to do is we're going to connect it up and we've got it onto a cigarette post. But for this specific job, we're going to show you something. We're going to be powering it just to test of this boy, which is the River Pro 720 by EcoFlow. A good little bit of kit for what it is. You can also... There's a you, bonus. Yeah, there's a bonus with this. On the side, little plug-in bit here, you can actually buy a battery, which turns it from 720 to 1440 watt hours. Now, EcoFlow, they are doing a lot of this stuff and they are going to be basically aiming stuff for camper vans where you can buy units or boats or campers so what they're doing is they're making integrated units that you can put into your van and then you can add on so you can add on an inverter you can add on an extra battery you can add on an extra power bank you can add on solar literally just plug and play by adding them into your vehicle which you, you can't do in a tent. tent no why not you just can't why because there's no walls to screw stuff to yeah but you've got a car anyway back to the river pro you not hang it off the walls i'll of hang tent. you in a minute if you don't shut your little face <laughs> as pretty as it is it will be dead um <gasps> anyway this little boy is it's just you're an idiot <laughs> this will charge 80 percent within one hour and it'll also charge up to 100% in 1.6 hours. So that's nothing, especially if you just plug it in as you're driving. Or yeah. At, well, at home, if you charge it up at home, that's nothing. Even on the road and like, you know, uh, off hook up in a campsite or even in a service station, there's always plugs about. You can plug it in. And it charges off solar as well, like all yeah. the rest of them. So. Charges off solar. The charging ports are all on the side here. So you've got your main input. And the good thing I like about these Unlike other units, we have a plug with a great big box and then it plugs in. These, it's just a kettle lead, straight in, just one lead, straight in. Saves on weight. Your solar input there, and it's all nice, tidied away. 240 is on the side, it's got two 600 watts, but it's got a bonus. X boost. So the technology lets you use appliances which are double that basically, so 1200 watts. On the front, you've got the obligatory cigarette port, which is what we're going to be using on the top. You've got two USBs, a fast charger, uh. and the light comes on when you turn the unit on. Aww. Child. You so, can't see it because it's not bright It's got a light there. <laughs> there you go. Lit up. And the good thing about it, it does SOS. So someone come and help me. Another good thing I love about these, now, you know we do live streams on a Sunday. If we're on the road, we do live streams as well. Some other power banks we've used, when we've plugged the Mac in to charge while we're doing a live stream, <laughs> makes that noise. These don't. No. Like, it just works perfectly, and it's got a 100 watt USB-C. Now that is a big, that's bigger than a Mac charger itself, so you can just plug in USB to USB C in your Mac or any other device, and you're getting a hundred watts out of this. I think our Mac chargers are about eighty watts, aren't they? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. So these, absolutely brilliant bit of kit. If you do want one of these, 
Links are in the description. It is a good size and it's a good weight as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's only about 7.2 kilos. Yeah, it's pretty. I mean, you have no problem holding it. <laughs> she got the beef. Also, there is an app where you can connect it to your phone via Bluetooth and you can monitor the input and the output. You can turn it on and off from the app and things like that. It's really good. So and again, it's got the same LCD screen that shows you everything there as well. Yeah, it, it is. It, it, I, we can't speak highly enough about these, so we're going to shut up now because we know that you're absolutely doing your nothing because, oh no, it's another power bank for you. <laughs> Let's get on the roof and plug stuff in. Yay! The haste of that. Oh, wow. There's some of them now furiously commenting. Now oh, another person that's sold out to power bank companies. Well, no, we've actually been Let's get on the roof. with this power bank company for a while now, haven't we? We haven't sold yeah, out. We just, no. we just like them. We enjoy them. Hmm. We don't like orange either, unless it's quartz and mix. Ah, cooks. You're a donkey. What we've done is we've got both panels going in together into the motor side. This is marked up. And then we've got the power going in there. Now what this does is this switches the polarity of the actual cable. So going up, live is live, negative is negative, negative is negative coming down negative is live live is negative and that's what this unit does there's a switch on the side just keep that to zero which is on the on button and then it will do a couple of other things but you get a little controller with it um, A will be up B will be down if you swap your cables around the other way B will be up A will be down um, so there you go right so we're purely just going to test this by plugging it into the power bank <laughs> Turning that on, it does give you a blue indicator light on there to say that it's on. And then now, both these units should go up when I ring someone. Hello? Can you send the units up, please? Ah, there we go. Oh, if you want to stop it, press A again to send them back in. B. So I'm going to put them all the way out. That means you'll be fully erect? Yeah, my rack will be fully erect. Right, so that is maximum now, which is fine for us. Once this is connected to the panels with a bar going across, that will be sufficient for us by, you no, know, no problem whatsoever. Right, we're going to get these down. We're going to connect them to a bar and then we're going to fit the bar to the roof. Someone's in trouble. And it isn't us. Right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a gland there and go through into the electric box and go into one of the switches on the switch panel to actually make them go live. I can run the cables down here and then go into the gland there. Right, I've got the gland in there. That goes right the way down to the back of the control panel. We do have one switch, like I said, left on. I've left it all up here for now. I'm going to wire the controller in the cupboard in a minute and then connect this to the actual actuator cables but right i'm gonna to be totally honest um i completely failed i'll show you what the problem was well i'll try and explain the problem the way we had the actuators on the actual roof the actuator was running sideways they've got to run on an angle like this mainly because they need to have a step up so when you're when you hit like raise it automatically goes up in the air now we had them mounted like that they were on a tiny little bit of an angle it just wasn't good enough the brackets are made for the side <clears throat> again they didn't help we thought they did but you've just got to try this stuff you just got to give it a go um anyway i've had to mount them to the roof of the van i'll show you in a minute but the problem that we came across was they needed to be on quite a sufficient angle like that to start off with. They couldn't be flat because what it was doing was it was pushing the unistrut basically off the van. It was trying to rip it off the van. So massive fail. I've ordered another actuator. So rather than have two, we've got three because the middle of the actual solar panels is the heaviest part. That one, I got a 1,500 Newton powered actuator on the edges well on the sides i'm going to fit a 1000 
just means that the middle will have a little bit more strength than the sides. It's the same length, it's the same coil speed, it's the same Everton. It's just a little bit of a bigger motor in the middle to hold more strength. On the edges, I'm basically going to bolt one of these brackets underneath the solar panel so that's sticking up. And obviously this part needs to be facing forwards like that. So I've got another one which I'm going to bolt onto the side once I've got the right height for it. I'm going to bolt that onto the side then cut the excess off there, mark where this is going to go and then cut the excess off there. The middle one I kind of found something in Wix which was just it was one of those you know when you see something you go ooh that'll do. Where Everton I was just saying then well no that's all gone wrong as well because the actual 1500s which are 400 stroke are longer than the 1000s 400 stroke that actually doesn't make any sense because technically these should be the same thing but just with a powerful motor I will show you so right down there that is the one we had on the 1000 this That is the 1500s, same length motor, but it's bloody longer. There's a part of me that just wants to give up, but I'm kind of engaged now. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not letting it beat me. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm just going to have to fit one more. I'm going to have to send that one back and I'm going to have to wait for another one to do the back. If you are planning on doing this job, I strongly recommend that you don't. So that's the bracket that I used on the actual middle of it, as you can see. Just put it under a little bit of pressure. And there's also a bow in the panels as well. One, it kind of does wear, but it just puts a little bit more strain with the BM1. It's well secure and it's holding the middle of the two panels. No problem whatsoever. It's <laughs> just honestly, Jim. It's blame him. He comes down here and everything goes wrong. Didn't touch this. To be fair, it's no one's fault bar me because I probably just went at it like a bull in the china shop. I didn't think. Didn't you research, did you? That's what I'm getting from the um, the goblin in the corner. Nothing, babe. Love you. Adding the second one on really makes it a lot more stable. I've got to get one for the end. I'm going to send that one back and get the same as we've got here. But I'll show you what I've done. So it's been mounted on the side there. Probably need to mask that up and give it a spray. But they're all the same height. They're all the same distance apart from the van. And when I press the button, The third actuator has arrived. Um, get it out of the box, get it put up to the other side of the um, solar panels, so then we've got one in the middle, one at the left, one at the right. Let's get up there, get that mounted, and um, test it all working. Got all three actuators in, I'll show you. Front one, middle one, and one at the back. Um, there is a weird curve on the, I don't know if you can see that, not the count. But it doesn't seem to be altered anything. Maybe if I move the back back a little bit, it would sort of give out. But, but I'm not really bothered about that. I'm just glad they work. Let's send them up. That's down. So that is as high as you'll go. I mean, you can get them higher just by moving them down further, but I don't want to. I am quite happy with that. When they come down, they fit perfectly in line with these holes, and I am still going to be using the bolts to go through to connect into each panel. So we've got two in each panel. So I'm still going to be I'm still going to be using them just purely for safety because I don't trust these to keep the panels down, not with side winds, and especially not on the motorway as well. So bring it down, and I'll. Uh, get them safety up 
safety up. I'm not even aware, does it? You know what I mean. So then they would literally go in there. I do have to lift the panel just a little bit. I put, put a stopper under there, but I'm not really bothered. To lift it up just a little bit like that, just to get the bolt in, that is nice and secure. There's going to be one there, and well, there's going to be two of them on each panel, purely just for safety. So, best to uh, not press the button while they're in, are they? Right, let's get down and talk about cost. The Linear actuators, the three of them cost £105. They were £34.99 each, well, £104.97 if you want to be precise. The controller for it was, let me see, that was $16.99. So, let's just, for say, say £120. Then I had to buy a couple of other brackets, say an extra £20 on top of that. So, let's give or take travel to and from places. Let's call it £150 in total. Um, we made, well, I made, I made some massive mistakes. Um, and I did. Uh, was it worth doing? Do I wish, it, am, am I glad I've done it? No, I'm not. I wish I'd just left it the way it was, but lessons learned. Um, it'll also show you guys how much of a ball ache it is. Do you know what? No, it's not 150 because we had to buy more uni struts. So add another 50 pound onto that. So 200 pounds in total. I was expecting it to come in at 100 pounds um, because I thought I just need the actuators and the controller. And I only actually budgeted for two actuators. So that would have been 70, 100 pounds two actuators and a controller so yeah 200 pound in total um an absolute nightmare a load of screaming a load of shouting a load of losing me rags spitting me dummy out not worth it um but you've seen me do it now if you do want to do it um i'm not even going to leave you links no i will i'll leave links in the description to the actuators that we bought and the controller that we bought the parts from um wix You'll just have to go down and have a look yourself. You'll have to make your own brackets for the sides, unfortunately. That's just the way it is. Only time will tell through bad weather and winters and stuff like that how long they last for. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Right, we're heading out now. We are going to get wet, aren't we? Yeah! Mm, we're going to get wet. We're going to take the puppers um, because we've been sent something. 99.9% .9 of you that watch our channel and probably watch the Trolls channel. We'll know exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> so, let's go and... Um, Have some fun. Mm.